Hey guys, it's Ebony. And it's Denise. And we're back with another video. A very important video. I almost want to try to make this as conversational as possible, like to the point where I don't even have to edit this video. Um, you could tell by the title what this video is about. But before we get into the video, we always have to start off with this because our comments are disabled and this is when we really, 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 really need you. So this photo that is appearing on the screen is on our Instagram at team 2 moms Please make sure to go follow us there. If you're already following us, great. Comment under this photo the feedback we are going to need from you guys in regards to this video. So, Denise and I have done a video before asking you guys, and I'll have the link down below, when do you think is the best time to explain to Olivia about the other half of her, the donor? And I remember a lot of you guys, I think the general feedback from you guys was to wait until she asked. And then there was a good percentage of you guys that said, you know, you will know when you're ready to have that discussion. So I'm going to probably do most of the talking in this video because it, it happened to her. The, the conversation opened up with Olivia with her um, doing the night routine um, with bathing her and stuff. So the, I think that's how it kind of flourished. Everything so. <laughs> flourished there um, about this conversation. So Denise wasn't present. and wasn't. Um, But I want her to be able to explain to you how she felt when yes. I explained to her the story. So let me first tell you how it came to be. Um, so like Diddy said, it was bath routine and I was getting Olivia ready for the night and she asked me, well, she more said, mama told me before that uh, me and the brothers are blood related. And we've used, we've said that on the channel. She's heard us more times say that they're blood related. Not in the significance of that's what makes them siblings, but she's just heard the term that they are blood related. So she asked, how, um, how am I blood related to um, my brothers? Now, before I get into this, Olivia is in the thumbnail and we, we had this conversation with her not on camera. And though I think she would be okay speaking about it on camera, I can tell she's not truly understanding understanding mm -hmm. of it and I don't want to put her in front of a camera. I want to be respectful of her emotions and let her kind of digest what we've told her and mm -hmm. so on and so, so forth. So that will come when she's ready to express how she feels to you guys. So that's our parenting hat first. So she asked how are they blood related <clears throat> and I had to take the conversation from the very beginning of how babies are made. <laughs> and I went and I told her, I said, you know, mommy had explained to you, and again, this is a video that we did for you guys before. Mm -hmm. Mommy explained to you that girls have eggs and boys have sperm. And in order to make a baby, you need the egg and the sperm to meet. And she asked me, and, and I swear this is how the conversation went. She's a very, very smart, very smart girl. <laughs> so please know seven is not too young for her. Olivia is way beyond immature way for her age. <laughs> she asked, now not about the boy. She said, how did you get the sperm? And I explained to her in simple terms, I said, me and mama went to a store that has sperm and we were able to get that sperm and go to a doctor to help us make you. And then I further explained that same, we went to the same store when it was time for mama to have your brothers and we used the same sperm from the same store. So that's why you and your brothers are blood related. Now, I'm actually starting to kind of forget how the story went, but I know somewhere in there, I she, she said, do you, she asked, no, I, I was, boy I was more sperm. specific. I said, a boy went to the store and gave his sperm mm -hmm. away and that allows me and mama to be able to get the sperm from the store because this boy walked into the store um, and gave his sperm away. And she said, do you know the boy? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, my heart 
stopped and I'm like, I probably should have paused and brought you into the conversation, mm -hmm. but it, I, I just wasn't thinking. Like too much, mm -hmm. too many thoughts were going through my head and I'm like, do I take this to its full length? And of course I did, because I'm like, she's asking such mature questions. Yeah. It only deserves mature, correct answers. Yeah. And I said, no, me and mama do not know who the boy is. And her face was like, like what? Like, like what? What? So I said, sometimes people want to help other people make babies. And when they want to help, not all the time, they want to be known on who they are. They just want to do a really good deed in helping others make babies mm -hmm. and continue going on. Um, now her reaction to that like blew me away. And then she go ahead and she asked, she asks her what Ebony told me is that she asks her who was the boy, mm -hmm. and um, then you said you could so she, so 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 with her asking who the boy is and so forth. So she I I she I no I said to her. However, um, to me the most mature question for her was. Do we know who the boy is? Yes, yes, yes. And to me, that formulates that she's understanding there's another person out there that may be Part of somehow connected to yeah. her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I then furthermore said, however, you can know if you wanted to who the boy is when you get older. And she was like, really? I want to know. Mm -hmm. And like her immediate reaction was, I want to know. And I'll be honest with you, again, I had like a moment of like, <sighs> <laughs> we, we're like, our journey is, is shifting. It's evolving. Mm -hmm. Being in a same sex parenting. It is. It's evolving. You know? And I'm sure this is not going to be the last conversation with her Absolutely regarding this. Not. It's going to be a continuous conversation with her. And you know, another thing I thought about, honey, mm -hmm. today I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, Olivia is seven. The boys are about to be two, right? Now, when Olivia is 18, she gets to know. But will she be sharing that with her brothers? She can. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, she so, so then we got to put into perspective that we actually, the boys get to know sooner. Sooner than, than Olivia. Than Olivia. So just to bring it back, especially for people who are new to our channel, um, the donor that we've chosen has an open um, ID where when the offsprings are at the age of 18, they can find out who he is. I'm not sure how much information is given, if it's just a name, date of birth, an address, I don't know, but only the offsprings can request his um, information. And Denise and I, when we started this journey very early on, it was a question to us, do we want to choose somebody who's anonymous versus somebody who's not anonymous for the offsprings? And it was very clear to us, because other families are different, there are varieties of reasons, but for us, it was important for our children to have that choice. We didn't want to take that choice away. So um, in that, I said to Olivia, even after she said, I want to know who the boy is, I said, you know, you don't have to know, but if you want to know, there is definitely an option. Because mm -hmm. other kids, I said, and I explained to her, there are other kids who have families like you do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they're older, they don't choose to know. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they do choose to know. Like I'm literally having this conversation with Olivia, but I said, well, when you're ready, um, let us know when you're old enough. And so she said, literally, and how can she find out? And I said to her, we would have to go back to the store that we got the sperm from, and mm -hmm. we give you that information, and then that's how you would be able to start mm -hmm. that journey of knowing who the boy is. Yeah. Um, and then, like, so 
like Ebony said, this was a conversation between her and Olivia in the restroom. I think I was like doing stuff with the boys. So anyways, um, so Ebony comes to me and tells me all this information and I, you know, I, I guess you guys want to know what my reaction is. Wait, but that's, just so you know, that's pretty much how the conversation end. And I just made sure to re state oh. to her, like, do you understand what mommy's explaining to you? And she said, mm-hmm. Now, I wish I could jump inside her, her body and absorb, see what pictures are going on in her head and mm -hmm. if she really does. But to me, and you guys let us know, um, I felt like she understood because her questions were quite yeah. advanced and eloquently Absolutely. and articulated. So now that's so it, it ended on me just saying, Do you understand? And she said yes. And so So Ebony comes and tells oh, me the story. No, actually, I'm sorry, not to cut you off. Uh, no, I said that I ended it off by saying, But you do know though that me and mama made you and mm -hmm. we're your parents. And she said yes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, for me, I had, had to, to top it off. So I had then. to top it back off gotcha. that, that way. So. so then, yeah, you come to me and you tell me the story. And um, I'm listening. I'm not quite reacting because I'm still trying to, like, register it in my brain. Um, so I said, you know, in my mind, I go, I have to talk to Olivia. I have to, you know, I have to speak to her. But the first thing you said was, I knew this was gonna come up soon. <laughs> like I knew this day was gonna come. So. Oh yes, yes, yeah. I did say that. And uh, so I walked into Olivia's room and um, I hug her. And I said, "I love you. You know, I love you." She's on her iPad, like playing her game. And then she's like, "I'm like, so I heard you and mommy. Mommy had a conversation." And she's like, "You know, yeah, it was kind of boring. You ain't gonna wanna know." Like she kind of like, I don't know. I I felt like. If she felt like she's gonna hurt my feelings a little bit, I don't know. I kind of felt that would be super advanced if she felt that way, or if she, if that's possible, or it's possible that she may not see it as something like how yet mm -hmm. to the magnitude of what it all true that like she gets it. Yeah, I think she just think we borrowed something from somebody, but doesn't know the genetic gotcha. true connection yeah. of it yet. Yeah, that that's what I think too. But, but the one question the one question I did ask her, I was like, ah, so I heard you had a conversation about the boy and you're really curious to know what the boy who the boy is. And she said, Mm-hmm, I am and I said, Okay. Well I just wanna let you know that I love you and um I'm here if you ever want to talk. She said, okay. And yes, I did, and it's coming back to me, I did say to her maybe several times, if you ever have questions, let me know. No question is silly, no question is weird, no question is bad, let us know. And just know that me and mama is always gonna be here to help guide you. So please, if you feel any way or you're curious about anything, please come to us. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I I felt that you felt like that was that first moment for you mm -hmm. because and, and and I know we have it both folds now that we we both birth our children. I think I, I think I, I think I know the question you're gonna ask me. Are you gonna ask me because I'm I'm the non-binary mom? I, um, but I, does it make me feel uncomfortable because then I'm gonna be like, okay, there's a guy present now that she's going to know that she may want to get to know which i would would equally experience with the boys, with the boys so, but absolutely. it feels i don't know why it feels maybe because they haven't said anything there's no words coming out of those boys there's yet. no there's no <laughs> there's no communication yet in that sense from them i honestly i i don't feel I don't know if this is the word, but insecure about my placement as her mama. Um, I I don't I you know when you when you when you're raising a child, you see that child every single day, and and you're teaching this 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 person to how to be a grown up and stuff like that. It's just like you know I, I don't feel anything else but her mama, and I feel like 
if she wanted, you know, that option was, that was a conversation we had initially when we start, started the whole journey of trying to conceive, especially with, you know, when we started with Olivia, that was one of the first questions we said. We, we, we had amongst ourselves, how are we gonna feel and how, what decision are we gonna make? Are we gonna have this an open um, situation and give them the option and stuff? You know, that's, those are conversations you bring up at the beginning. So you already can prepare yourself mm -hmm. somewhat mentally. But once you're in it, I mean, I was struck. I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh snap. It kind of, it kind of reminded me about the dynamics and the differences of our family. Mm -hmm. Because we go through our everyday lives, everybody around us sees it no differently. Mm -hmm. So now when you add these layers that mm -hmm. does come with same-sex parenting, um, it 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 kind of brings you back like, oh yeah, there yeah. are differences. And then, you know, um, <clears throat> it, th this whole scenario brought me back to a documentary on MTV. I don't know the name of it. Um, if oh. any of you guys know it, please let me know. But it was a documentary about um, a girl and her sib and her well, diblings, they call them, um, which are the donor siblings. Um, her and her diblings all came together to try and find the, the donor. Uh, I think the end of the story ended up that she did not, or he didn't want to. He didn't want to be known. He didn't want to be known. So you know, unfortunately, that that situ situation is quite different. And I'm actually but, quite curious to know if the donor can change his mind. Yeah, that's a good question. Because I'm sure he did this at a part of his life where he didn't have a family and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so like now when you've evolved in your life, because. I mean, Olivia seven. For we know the donor could have been there for eight, nine years mm -hmm. um, in total, because there are uh, uh, diblings a little bit older than Olivia. I'm sure the donor's life has changed yeah, dramatically. You don't even know the, the 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 age of the donor right now, or do you? I can. We can. Yeah. We could find. But out. I'm just saying, I'm sure his life is a lot, a lot different. different from yeah. when he donated. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if he could change his mind. Olivia is probably the best child to have gone this experience, do this experience first. first. Yeah. Because she's just so in the know and she's like so smart, smart. like she, she gets it. And I think she's gonna be, uh, a, she's gonna basically, basically teach her brothers or mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's She's a good amazing. example to good follow. Good example, exactly. To follow behind in them, so. Um, yeah, go to our Instagram. I would like to hear, especially from families who've already went through this phase of life where their kids are older and they found or got in contact um, with the donor and how it impacted your family, whether good or bad. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, we love you guys. We love you. All right, it is Team, Team two, two Moms. One, two, three. Peace. Hey.